Hello. God bless you and welcome. Welcome to. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so asleep. So asleep. Welcome to my home, to my ministry, uh, Free at Last Ministries. Thank you, God. We took a nap because it was so sleepy and then woke up and I said, oh, gotta preach, gotta preach. So I've been trying to get together and get all this together. It's a good message. Is your name written in the book of life? Oh my goodness. We need to get ready and to know for sure that our names are written in the book of life. Did you know that um, there's somebody out here wanting to know. Oh, she's watching. Okay, Jenny's watching. Um, did you know that we're in the last days and that the Antichrist spirit is so strong around here that people believe a lie? People are so content with the way they're living and, and they feel like no matter what they look like, dress like, act like, it doesn't matter. They feel like they're going to heaven. But let me tell you something. Is your name written in the book of life? I was getting ready to study just one chapter of Ezekiel 3, but uh, we'll go to that after the rest of this. That's going to be my last uh, thing that I go to. Okay, Alicia, wake up. <laughs> I love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 3. Well... I have to have the large print, and the large print has a lot of pages. <laughs> That's okay. I can see. Uh, Ezekiel 3. Okay, Ezekiel 5. And the pages are stuck together. There they are. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and read this one first. I can do that. You know that? I can do that. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. Oh my goodness. That same man shall die. Mm -mm. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. That means sin. He shall die in his sin, but his blood will I require at your hand. Do you understand that? Do you hear that? We are called to be witnesses. We're not all preachers and pastors and, you know, all the things. I just want to be used by God. I don't care how he uses me as long as I can tell somebody about Jesus and what he's done for me and what he can do for them. It says, um, I say to the wicked, say, and it says, yet if you warn the wicked of his wicked way and he turns not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, in his sin. But you have delivered your soul. In other words, that blood ain't going to be on my hands. Because I do my best to try to warn everybody everywhere. We went out to eat today. And when I went to go pay the, the lady at the counter, uh, I just handed her one of my cards. And I asked her, "Can I, I, I just started telling her about who I was and showed her my scars. And, and I said, uh, can I, can I read a poem to you and dramatize a poem to you? She said, yeah, I dramatize memories of a junkie. And they started gathering around so they could all hear it. And I was just totally amazed at that. But it, it just bubbles up inside of me that I got to tell somebody, we got to warn the wicked of their wicked ways. I used to be this, but I'm not that anymore. Gotta excuse my voice. Woo, we had a great time last night and a great time this morning. Gonna have another great time tonight. Lost my coffee. Let me go find it. Oh, no, that's yours. Okay, mine must be in here. Yep, yeah, there it is. That's a cup of coffee. You don't have one. Get your Bible time. Well, honey. 
We're going to have more fun and get revival time. Revival? revival. Yeah, we're all having revival. There's churches breaking out revival all over the place. Mm -hmm. We had revival last night. We had revival this morning. We're getting revived, getting ready for the church to be called away. So let me finish. Oh, I bought this so I won't lose my glasses. I'm always losing my glasses. And got my Kleenexes. Okay. So, um, again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. They're talking about the backslider. You hear me? The backslider. Uh, lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you gave him no warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. Do you hear that? It shall not be remembered. Uh, but his blood will I require at thine hand, my hand, because I didn't warn that backslider that he was going to go to hell if he doesn't get his life right with God. Wake up. Get your hearts right with God. Stop all this playing around and, and thinking God's going to give in to the sin you're living in. He ain't going to do it. Then it says, um, it's righteousness, so I be cry at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. Amen. His name was in the, written in the book of life when he backslid. It wasn't going to be remembered to be in there. That's what I was studying to say. Can your name be taken out of the book of life after it's already been written in there? And the Lord led me to this scripture. And it says, for the righteousness which he has done will not be remembered. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. People think because once, once upon a time they had their names written in the book of life that it's there forever. There are lying spirits out there and they come through the mouths of preachers. The mouths of pastors that tell them it's okay. Once you sin, you ask, once you repent and ask God to forgive you, just go on about your way. Your name's written in the book of life and people live any way they want to. They are so deceived by lying spirits. There's so many spirits out there that if you don't have the Holy Ghost living inside of you, you won't be able to discern it. Okay, let's go on to some more. Uh, da, 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 da. Psalms 56. I had two different Bibles. I'm hoping I wrote it all down in this one. Oops, put that back up there. I have a picture of a backslider in my Bible praying for that man. Lord, help us, Jesus. Okay, what did I say? Psalms. Psalms. You know, it says Psalm, but uh, when you look on uh, Google, it'll say Psalms. Because there's more than just, oh, it is Psalms. The book of Psalms. Well, I'll be. 31 years being saved, and I just now learned that. Because it doesn't, it says Psalm 1, Psalm 2, Psalm 3. So I thought that's what it is. Psalm, Psalm. But it's the book of Psalms. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, and it's Psalms 56. I had this marked. I'm sorry. I guess I switched my Bible and got this one. Okay, Psalms 56. Thou tellest my wanderings, put my tears into your bottle. He knows where I'm going. He knows what I'm crying out to him. He knows how my heart is broken. And it says he puts my tears in his bottle. Are they not written in the book? 
Okay, I'm going to go to Revelation so I can read that one. So that way I can. Da -da 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 Not that one either. Unless you grabbed the wrong Bible. That's okay. That's okay. Revelation 20. And I saw a great white throne. Oh. And I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. They were scared to death. They didn't want to go to that judgment. They knew that they were living wrong. They didn't want to go and be judged by God because it was the final judgment. The final judgment that tells you you're either going to live eternity in hell or eternity in heaven. And oh, there's no in between. Oh my goodness. There's no road for, um, oh, I don't know what the Catholics call it. Um, anyways. There's purgatory. There is no purgatory. Nope. It's hell or heaven. Uh, whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no place for them. They had no place to hide. Oh my goodness. They're going to hide like Jesus said. Let the rocks fall down on me. No, you're not going to be able to die because that's another, uh, that's another one. Okay. And it says, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. They weren't judged out of the, the book written. Of, they weren't judged out of the book of life. They were judged out of the books that were written. Oh my goodness. According to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Whether you're saved or a sinner. You will be judged for the work that you do. You don't play church. Mm -mm. You don't come to church and act like you're all into God and, and you've lived for him all week long. And you know you're lying. And God knows you're lying. But anyways, you will be judged for that. You'll be judged for cussing, telling dirty jokes, sitting there listening to gossip. You, you'll be judged for so much. Oh my goodness. And whosoever was not found in the book of life Wait, according to their words, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. You hear that? Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. It's appointed unto man once to die. But after that, the judgment. And he'll, here's where they'll decide where you're going to go. Where God, Jesus will decide. Where you're going to go. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Oh my goodness. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Jesus. When Jesus was uh, talking to his boys, he sent them out. He sent out 70, two by two, two by two. I always wondered why two by two. And sometimes me and my friends, one gets discouraged, the other lifts them up. When the other one gets discouraged, they lift us up. You know, it's because two is a witness. You know, it's got to take two witnesses. Like if I go out there and tell you about Jesus, I need somebody with me to say, yep, that's right. That's right. It's in the book. It's right here written in the book. This is one of the books that they'll be that you'll be judged by. It says, uh, and the books were opened. And one of these books will be this one right here. You'll be judged out of this book by what Jesus says. 
What Moses says, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. That wasn't Moses. That was God giving him those commandments. Those commandments are God's commandments. But anyways, so Jesus sends them out two by two. Well, anyways, and they they go and, no, I want to read it. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where is it at? Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> okay. So, he sends them out two by two. He says, go your way. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. There are wolves out there who will deceive you. They'll trick you into believing that their way is right and your way is wrong. Or that there's, it's nothing wrong with the way that this is. I'm living all right. I'm just doing this one thing. Or it's okay if I do this and do that. They will convince you because you don't have enough in you to, to stand there and discern that spirit. My voice, my voice, my voice, my voice. So many times I've been somewhere talking to somebody and at first I felt like I love this person. But the more they talked, the more their true spirit came out of them. And you can just know, you can feel the spirit that wasn't right inside of them. I can't explain it to you unless you know for yourself. But how will you know if I don't tell you? Okay, it says, um, And into whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick. This is to the Christians. This is to the ones who are sent out by God. This is what you, he says. And heal the sick. He's giving you the power to do this. Heal the sick that are therein. And say unto them, the kingdom of God has come unto you. Thank you, Jesus. But into whatever city you enter and they receive you not, go your way out of the streets of the same and say, even the very dust of... Now, we'll skip over that. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom and Gomorrah than that for that city. Go down, go down, go down. And the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the, what was it? Even the devils, the demons are subject unto us through thy name. Satan had him flee when they say in the name of Jesus. There's power behind that. If you had the power. Um, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall out of heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He's given this to us. He says he is. You've got to believe that he has. You've got to use it. Um, oh, I can't think of the word. Exercise that. Exercise that gift that he has given you. That power that is within you. I rebuke you, Satan. Get your hands off of her. I rebuke you, Satan. Get out of my house. In the name of Jesus, get out of my house. Um. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this, rejoice not. Don't rejoice over the power he gives you. But rather, rejoice because your names are written down in heaven. In the book of life. Oh my goodness. I love studying the word of God. Oh my goodness. It revives me. It, it Fills me up again with the questions that I had from before and can't remember where it's at. Okay. Now we're going to go to. There are so many books. So many books that will be open that we will be judged by. Oh my goodness. Okay. Malachi 3.16. 
Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. We fellowshiped with one another. We got together and had church with each other. We encouraged one another. And the Lord hearkened. He heard us. And a book of remembrance was written before him, before God, for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make my jewels. When I make my jewels. Hallelujah. He sees us as jewels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spared his own son that serves him. He's talking about those that serve him, not wishy washy, not they're in sometimes and back out and then come back again. It's good to repent. You must repent. But getting in and out and in and out, you don't know if you're going to die on the time that you're out of church. And if you are, all the good things that you have done for God while you were saved is going to be forgotten. Your name that's written in the last book of life is not going to be remembered anymore. It's not there. Then... Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serveth him not. God says we'll be able to see that. I want to be a jewel. I want to be a jewel in my father's eyes. I want to be a bright red ruby or the largest diamond in the world. <laughs> no, I just want to be a jewel in his eyes. Okay, let's see. Um, John 21, 25. I found so many places where the books were, I was talking about the books. And uh, right here where John says this, John, John, at the end of John, the last verses, 24 and 25 say, this is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. I'm talking about John the Revelator, the one that God, that uh, Jesus allowed to live until the end of his days. He was the one that uh, was cast on the Isle of Patmos. They tried to burn him, boil him. They boiled him in a big old pot of oil. The fire was getting hot, hot. It was boiling. But he wouldn't die because Jesus wouldn't let him. And all those heathens out there that watched it, they stabbed John with a spear and his blood came out and put out that fire. What do you think about that? Being so close to God, he allowed something like that to happen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I read it in one of those books. One of those books that was written about John. Then it says, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Amen, amen. There are so many books. Um... Matthew 10, let me see, Matthew 18, 10, I believe it is. I'll close with this. Matthew, Matthew 18, 10. Oh, wrong way. Matthew 
Matthew 18, 10. I love this. I love telling this to children. But I'm speaking to God's children right now. Okay. It says, take heed. That means be careful. Watch out. Beware. That you don't despise not one of these little ones. I believe he's talking to the church. And he's telling them, these new Christians that are coming in, you watch what you say to them. Because if you make them run, it's better than a millstone wrapped around your neck and you are thrown to the deepest part of the sea. Um, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, their angels, T-H-E-I-R, their angels, your angels, my angels, do forever behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Angels, plural, it's not just one. It's got to be more than one. It's got to be two. Oh, my goodness. God sends a multitude of angels to protect us, to deliver us. All we got to do is ask. Believe on the name of Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Um. But here he's saying he will send his angels. Our angels, our angels, our guardian angels are there to protect us. But you know what else they're doing? They're carrying a book. And everything you do is written in that book and carried to God. That book of remembrance is about you, about what you've done, how you lied, how you were supposed to do this and supposed to do that, and you didn't do it. You found an excuse. You went somewhere else. And there are souls around you that are dying because they're depending on you. They're depending on you. My pastor told this little story, said that, uh, well, it was not a story, it's true, about a man that, uh, drained and he was walking on, on hell, on the top of hell and said these souls kept coming up and he grabbed one and he'd look at it and he'd let them back down into hell and he'd walk some more on that hot, hot hell. And he reached way down and he pulled another one up. And one of the souls said, what are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for the preacher who lied to me. The one who patted me on the back and told me I was doing all right. The one who lied to me. That's the, that made me go to hell. That's the one I'm looking for. Oh, Father in heaven. I didn't pray before we got started. Oh, my Lord, I'm so sorry, God. But can't do nothing without God. Can't do nothing without Jesus or the Holy Ghost. But anyways, uh, he says, take heed that you don't hurt one of these little ones. He's talking about kids that come in there, young adults, people that come in with earrings and shorts and pants and you know, I didn't know how to live a Christian. I've never been a Christian before. But I came in the church and the church judged me. Not God. Because I never opened up the Bible. But the church judged me. The pastor, the people, they judged me. And then I'd backslide. And I'd come back again. Because I wanted to live for God. With all my heart, I wanted to live for God and serve Him. But again, they judged me. They judged me for the way I dressed, the way I cut my hair, the way I looked, everything about me, my voice, my the way I shout, you know, everything was wrong. I, I was backslid again. I didn't need that religion. I had women come to my work and tell me that if I didn't stop wearing my pants, they would not fellowship with me anymore. Like what? And I thought they never fellowshiped with me anyway. But it caused me to backslide. And God took revenge. I hate it. I hate it with all my heart that it happened. But I read it in the book and I saw it with my own eyes. But God said, don't touch my anointed. I wasn't anointed back then. I never thought that I would be here today. But that's what he's talking about. Don't cause my children to backslide. Because he's got a purpose and a plan. And that person will reach someone that you and I could never reach. Somebody famous maybe. I don't know. But all I 
know is that God cares about his children. He cares about his babies. I'm his baby. Don't mess with me. I'm his baby and you will suffer for that. I'll show you another place to prove that. Isaiah 54. I know it says you can close with that one, but let me close with this one. Isaiah 54. I love Isaiah. Oh, I love Isaiah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 54. God loves his, his church. He loves his church, all the church. I mean, everyone in his church, he loves, but they're deceived and they believe a lie because they like where they can get their ears tickled and believe that everything's okay. They don't want to feel the conviction anymore. Nobody, excuse me, nobody wants to feel conviction because it makes them think and cry and, and come back to God. Okay. It says, And I will make thy windows of agates and the gates of carbuncles and all thy borders of pleasant stones. Those jewels that I just talked about. I'm going to be a jewel in my father's eyes. I am a jewel in my father's eyes. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. <clears throat> in righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Now listen. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. God did not send those people. He didn't send those liars and deceivers and tormentors. They're working for Satan. Because he's the one that's making you leave. Because he knows God's got a plan for you. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Amen, amen, amen. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. And that bringeth forth an instrument. For his work. Mm -mm -mm. And I have created the waster. To destroy. No weapon. Formed against thee. Shall prosper. And every tongue. That shall rise up against you. You shall condemn. This is the heritage. Of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, I don't want to be in self-righteousness, no. And I take no joy or pleasure in people who get hurt because of me. But that's like my pastor. I used to, I hated her. <laughs> you know, I just really hated her. But when I humbled myself and God spoke to me and said, go wash her feet. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. But he said three times so softly, go wash your feet. And I knew exactly where she was sitting. And I know there was a woman named Stella that opened up the door in the back because I didn't know where anything was. And I got that water nice and warm. Oh, so nice and warm. And I got it and I was trying to carry it out. My snots were just coming down. I couldn't wipe them. And I was carrying that out. And that girl opened up that door even bigger. And when I came out, everybody was looking at me, especially because they knew where I was headed. They didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't even know what I was going to do. But I went over there and I got in front of her. She was sitting on the outside pew because she goes up to sing. But my pastor, I, she looked up at me and I said, Sister Judy, can I wash your feet? And she said, yes. And I put that down and so gently and softly, I took her foot and put it in there. And as soon as I did, I heard God speak and say, now she'll pray for you. I was trying to get delivered from cigarettes. And I told the Lord, if you want me to be delivered, send Sister Judy to pray for me. Send Sister Judy to pray for me. Well, when she stuck her foot in the water and I started to wash it, he spoke to me and said, now she'll pray for you. 
And she laid her hand on me and I never felt the Spirit of God like I did that day. Oh, so beautiful, so beautiful. And it makes me want to come back for more, come back for more. But anyways, I love God. I love him so much. And I'm making heaven. I'm going to make it. I don't care if they cut off my head and every limb of my body. I'm making heaven. But I want you to go to heaven with me. I want your name being written in the book of life. Oh, please, please, please read the Bible. Listen to the news out there. All that's going on. I'm telling you, one day you're going to hear that the government is demanding to put a chip in your right hand or your forehead. And that is the mark of the beast. I think we're going to talk about that next week. But anyways, I know I'm not popular with anybody. That's okay. I don't care. I know that the ones who are on here right now, listen to me, are ordained by God to hear what I've got to say. And God will judge them if they do not repent from their sins. If you do not repent and give your heart totally over to God, that means shut off the TV, get alone with your Bible, pray. I'm not telling you to give up your TV. I'm telling you to turn it off and give God the same time that you give it. I don't judge you. I don't condemn you. I don't... I believe that's why he called me into the prison ministry. I will never ask them what they've done. I'm there to represent my God and my Savior and to tell them that they can be saved and washed cleaner than snow. They'll still have to answer for their sins to the law, but God will forgive them instantly if they only ask. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you, Lord God, with praise and thanksgiving. Forgive me, Father, for not opening up with prayer. Oh, God, I was just so excited to preach this message, but I know that I cannot do anything without you, Lord. God, there's so much that I still wanted to say, God, but I couldn't get it out. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you, Father, for this ministry. Thank you for this ministry, Lord God. Thank you for allowing me to speak to people and to talk to everyone and anyone about you, my Lord. Oh, God, I want to win souls for your kingdom. I die inside because I need souls, God, to bring before you. God, I love you. I love you. I love you. I ask, Lord God, help us to get right with you. Help us to repent from our sins, from all of our sins, and, and just get right with you, God, so that our names can be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, never to be removed, never to be forgotten. But, Lord, that we can come there and, and just rejoice when we, when you come to get us, Lord. Oh, what a day that will be when Jesus Christ, we will see. Hallelujah. In the clouds, meeting them in the air. Lord, I love you and praise you. Give you the honor and glory for all things in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And I hope you listen to this and, and just acknowledge it, you know, receive it and, and just Get along with God. Fall in love with the Son. Oh my goodness. And ask the Holy Ghost to come inside of you. Because with the Holy Ghost, it will bring you to all remembrance. It will lead you and guide you and keep you from this and help you to rebuke that. And I'm telling you, we need the Holy Ghost so much in this hour, in this day, in this hour. But I love you guys. I said I let you go, so I'm letting you go. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. Oh, I threw you a kiss. <laughs>